And then just finishing up with protein, the other big issue that often comes up is, well, what about the quality of plant protein? Can you really get all of those essential amino acids, sometimes we call them indispensable amino acids from plants? Aren't they, don't we have to complement proteins? Don't, you know, aren't they lacking? And, and the truth is we can absolutely get all the amino acids we need from, from plants. Animals do not make essential amino acids. It's why they're essential, because we can't make them. Animals can't make them. They're made by plants. It makes no sense to think we can't get them from plants. It's where they come from. Of course we can get them from plants. So all plants contain all nine essential amino acids. We can get all of those essential amino acids from plants either directly or indirectly. Directly by eating the plants or indirectly by eating animals that ate the plants or very indirectly by eating animals that ate other animals that ate plants. They come from plants. So we certainly can get them from plants. Now the thing to know is yes, some plants are low relative to human requirements in one of the amino acids, but it's not a big concern. Because, you know, this old myth that we needed to complement proteins is really not true. We can get sufficient of all of the essential or indispensable amino acids if we eat a variety of plant foods over the course of 24 hours. So otherwise, we really don't have to worry about it. So we need a variety of plants and we need to get enough calories. If we do those two things, we don't have to worry so much about the quality of protein. The only people that would really have to worry are very young children who are barely meeting their protein requirements. Then we'll need to think about making sure they have some of the higher quality protein. So we'll want them to make sure they have enough legumes. And usually providing enough legumes in the diet will solve that problem because the amino acid that's most commonly lacking in children's diets would be lysine. And the most concentrated source of lysine in the plant world, of course, is legumes. So that solves that. Uh, the next nutrient I want to talk about is iron. And how much do we need? Well, women need about 18 milligrams, men and older women about eight. And the upper tolerable intake level is 45 milligrams. Now, sometimes you'll see vegetarians need 1.8 times more than this. I think that's been, that, that recommendation has been discredited because it was based on one study that minimized the uh, enhancers of iron absorption, maximize the inhibitors of iron absorption. And so it, it's very questionable whether or not vegetarian, vegetarians might need a tiny bit more, but not, not much more than that. And the reason that women need so much more iron than men is simply because they're, they're losing uh, iron in their, in their um, menstrual period every month. That's all. So postmenopausal women who, who have stopped menstruating I have the same requirement as men. So what are the actual intakes? Well, surprise, surprise, here's the Adventist Health Study, two non-vegetarians, 20 milligrams, lacto-ovo, 22.1, and vegans, 22.2. Vegans are at the top of the pile. Look at Epic Oxford, again, vegans are at the top of the pile. Look at the diet quality study from Belgium, Again, 17 for non-veg, 20 for lacto-ovo, 23 for vegans. Vegans consistently consume the most iron of any of the dietary groups. Now, we know that they're not consuming heme iron, which is super absorbable. And so what are their, what, what is their iron status like? That's what really matters. Not as much how much they're eating, but are they absorbing the iron they're eating? So vegetarians and vegans do not have a higher incidence of iron deficiency. Iron stores, however, which is serum ferritin, are typically lower in those on plant-based diets. So the lower iron stores, if they're at the lower end of the normal range, don't affect how a person feels. They're not at a disadvantage when the iron in the blood is replenished. So hemoglobin and hematocrit are okay, Serum ferritin a little on the low side, not an issue. However, it may actually turn out to be an advantage, which is kind of interesting. Both high ferritin and high heme iron, which is the iron in blood, meat of course, are associated with insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes. 
They're, they're associated with cardiovascular disease risk, some cancers, and oxidative, and oxidative stress. So having high stored serum ferritin or high uh, heme iron can actually work against you. So heme iron is found in animal tissue, meat, poultry, and fish. About 40 to 45% of the iron in meat is heme, traces in other foods. It's very rapidly absorbed regardless of how much the body needs. It can act as a pro-oxidant, and that was actually quantified in a number of studies. So very interesting, for every one milligram of iron consumed per day, the disease risk increases an estimated 27 to 57% for heart disease, depending on the study you look at, 16% for diabetes, and 12% for colon or lung cancer. That's for every one milligram of heme iron. It's shocking, absolutely shocking. Now, non-heme iron in plant foods, on the other hand, is absorbed and released in a controlled manner as the body needs it. So a lot of different forms of iron, but there's, you know, some of the plant iron is actually absorbed in a huge molecule with, tha with a thousand or more uh, atoms of iron. And those atoms are released as the body needs it in a controlled manner. So they don't act as pro-oxidants. This protects us from iron overload and from oxidative stress. And non-heme iron is not associated with increased disease risk. So how do we maximize iron status? We want to select iron-rich foods within each food group. We want to be aware of absorption inhibitors, of absorption enhancers, and we want to replace meat and, with legumes rather than with dairy. So let's look at these things. So selecting iron-rich foods from each food group. So legumes, the most iron-rich legumes, are uh, soybeans, tofu, lentils, black beans, lima beans, and chickpeas. I had a friend who found that her iron was a little on the low side. She added lentils to her breakfast bowl. So instead of just the whole grains, she added lentils in, cooked them together, and that was enough for her. She got her iron back up without any problem. Uh, whole grains, um, amaranth, quinoa, mostly the, the pseudo grains are a little higher in iron, but wheat, kamut, spelt, iron fortified cereals, of course, are all iron rich. Nuts and seeds, all seeds are, are rich in iron. Almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews, pine nuts. Uh, vegetables, the green leafy vegetables, peas, string beans, olives are all pretty rich in iron. And in the fruit family, prune juice and dried fruits are, are richer than other fruits. And then other foods, of course, the fortified foods like fortified meat analogs, but also blackstrap molasses. Blackstrap molasses is interesting. If you, you'd want to buy organic for sure. But um, a couple tablespoons of blackstrap molasses has about the same amount of iron as an eight-ounce steak. It's quite shocking. So you want to be aware of absorption inhibitors. And the biggest things are phytates, polyphenolic compounds, zinc, and calcium. So the, the two that, that are probably most problematic are the phytates and the polyphenolic compounds, which can reduce your absorption of iron by about 50 to 90%. And phytates, the most concentrated source, is wheat bran. And a lot of seniors especially sprinkle wheat bran on their food. And that can really impair the absorption of minerals. So we have to be careful of that. Uh, polyphenolic compounds, mainly in tea, like tannins in tea, can really reduce your uh, iron absorption. So you would want to keep your tea separate from your meals to enhance your iron absorption. And then uh, zinc can interfere, and calcium, especially in dairy products, can interfere with calcium absorption. So you want to boost calcium, or I'm sorry, boost iron absorption. So foods rich in vitamin C and organic acids, allium vegetables like onions and garlic, beta carotene rich foods such as carrots, spices like pepper, turmeric, and ginger can all actually enhance iron absorption to some degree. The most potent being vitamin C rich rich uh, fruits and, and vegetables. And then, of course, replacing meat with legumes rather than dairy. You see, meat is iron rich. Legumes are iron rich. Dairy is iron poor. And what we often see in people becoming vegetarian is instead of meat and potatoes, they have lasagna, they have pasta with Alfredo sauce, they have grilled cheese sandwiches, they have all of these 
pizza and so on. They're familiar foods, they're comfort foods, and they end up iron deficient quite often when they do that. So we need to be aware of that. 